Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nitin Shoda and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. Thank you so much for being a viewer. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. If you're not a member of our community yet, please consider subscribing. Please enable notifications. I would greatly appreciate that. This channel, the Ignition Time channel, is about the country, it's about the economy, and it's about your money. Speaking of country, today is a very important day. Today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday is on the 15th of January and today is a federal holiday, the third Monday of every January is Martin Luther King Jr. Day and it is a federal holiday. Unfortunately, on the 4th of April 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, his life was taken away and shortly, shortly after that horrific incident, uh, there were some incredible comments made by Robert Kennedy, uh, John F. Kennedy's younger brother, and he made, he made a speech that I think is extremely memorable and I believe that speech is even more relevant in the times that we live in today because the context of the speech is so very important. Robert Kennedy said, what we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred, but is love and wisdom and compassion towards one another. He was speaking right after Martin Luther King Jr.'s life was taken away in that, in that horrific, horrific incident. Let's take a look at these comments from Robert Kennedy. And uh, these are some incredible comments. And again, many, many years later, more than 50 years later, because this happened in 1968, more than 50 years later, these words still have meaning, have significance. And many would agree these words have more significance now than ever before, more than half a decade later. I think it's worth listening to this speech because I think that uh, this is something that all of us should hear. Let's roll the tape and hear words from Robert Kennedy. In this difficult day, in this difficult time for the United States, it's perhaps well to ask what kind of a nation we are and what direction we want to move in. For those of you who are black, considering the evidence evidently is that there were white people who were responsible, you can be filled with bitterness and with hatred and a desire for revenge. We can move in that direction as a country in greater polarization. Black people amongst blacks and white amongst whites filled with hatred toward one another. Or we can make an effort, as Martin Luther King did, to understand and to comprehend and replace that violence, that stain of bloodshed that is spread across our land with an effort to understand compassion and love. For those of you who are black and are tempted to fill with, be filled with hatred and mistrust of the injustice of such an act against all white people, I would only say that I can also feel in my own heart the same kind of feeling. I had a member of my family killed, but he was killed by a white man. But we have to make an effort in the United States. We have to make an effort to understand, to get beyond or go beyond these rather difficult times. My favorite poem, my, my favorite poet was Aeschylus. And he once wrote, Even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own day despair against our will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. What we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. Feeling of justice toward those who still suffer within our country, whether they be white or whether they be black. We can do well in this country. We will have difficult times. We've had difficult times in the past, but we will, and we will have difficult times in the future. 
it is not the end of violence. It is not the end of lawlessness. And it's not the end of disorder. But the vast majority of white people and the vast majority of black people in this country want to live together, want to improve the quality of our life, and want justice for all human beings that abide in our land. With and what dedicate ourselves to what the Greeks wrote so many years ago, to tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. Let us dedicate ourselves to that and say a prayer for our country and for our people. And in a tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., here's a tweet on your screen from former President Barack Obama. If anyone had a right to question whether our democracy was worth redeeming, it was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Because in the face of billy clubs and lynching, poll taxes and literacy tests, he never gave in to violence, never waved a traitorous flag or gave up on our country. Pretty strong comments from former President Barack Obama. And again, this is a day, uh, this, is, this is an important day and I wanted to pay tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And now I want to shift gears towards what I believe this pandemic is exposing. This pandemic has increased the gap between the haves and the have-nots. Individuals in travel, leisure, entertainment and hospitality have been horrifically impacted as a, as a direct result of this pandemic. I believe that the decades that it took for the middle class to catch up to finally have a shot at the American dream, decades of growth, decades of inequality that had been wiped out has now essentially gone back to square one. I believe that the reduction in income inequality that took decades to happen has been wiped out in a matter of months because of the, because of this pandemic. Because individuals who are vulnerable, individuals who work in travel, entertainment, leisure and hospitality found their jobs gone forever, found their savings wiped out, found themselves dependent on stimulus benefits, found themselves dependent on unemployment benefits. Whereas those who had assets, saw their assets grow. The stock market went up. Those who had assets by way of real estate saw their assets grow. Those who could work remotely in managerial positions, those who could just use a computer and make money, those who could pretty much do what they wanted from home have now become richer and richer. And on top of that, as a direct result of the administration's policies, a lot of businesses got paycheck protection program money, they got EIDL loans, and they got Main Street lending program money, and they got enough money to ride them through this pandemic and emerge stronger on the other side. In fact, you'll see this article on your screen from the Wall Street Journal. And the headline of the article reads, Post-COVID Recovery Divides Rich Nations from Poor. So what I'm talking about is not just a national phenomenon within the history of America. This is a global phenomenon. Poor countries are not only getting poorer, but they don't have access to the vaccine because rich individuals in the rich countries have access to the vaccines first. And you'll see the article state the economic repercussions of the pandemic on top of existing vulnerabilities will make it hard for developing countries to bounce back quickly. According to this article from the Wall Street Journal, President like Joe Biden will be focused foremost on the US economy when he takes office, but he will also have to deal with the repercussions of the uneven global recovery. Continuing hardship in Mexico and Central America, for example, will send more migrants to the southern border. The US may be called on to help bail out sovereign borrowers. In other words, people who've borrowed, who are now who are now about to default on money that they borrowed from other countries, including the United States of America. Take a look at this chart on your screen, which shows you the diverging paths of the global recovery. And you'll see that the per capita gross domestic product by region is expected to increase in East Asia and the Pacific, South Asia, Eastern Europe, Central Asia, advanced economies like the United States will do well. But take a look at those countries towards the bottom right hand side of this chart. Latin America and the Caribbean, Middle East and North Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. These countries will simply not be able to recover as a result of this pandemic. In fact, according to the World Health Organization, and you'll see this article on your screen from CNBC, the world is on the brink of catastrophic moral failure due to unfair vaccine rollouts, according to the chief of the World Health Organization. Now, in case you're thinking, ah, we don't have to listen to the World Health Organizations. Listen, folks, I'm, this video was designed to shed some light on what's happening globally. So I appreciate your patience with that. The head of the World Health Organization said the equitable distribution of vaccines is at a serious risk. And he said 
that the world was on the brink of a catastrophic moral failure. Now, according to Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, I actually had to rehearse that a couple of times. The World Health Organization's Director General warned of a catastrophic moral failure. He said the recent emergence of rapidly spreading variants makes a rapid and equitable rollout of vaccines all the more important. He added that this distribution could easily overcome another brick in the wall for inequality between the world's haves and the have-nots. He said, as the first vaccines begin to be deployed, the promise of equitable access is at serious risk. In other words, he's saying that there needs to be some measure of equality to the access and not just because you're a rich dude living in the Hamptons versus... Yeah, versus, uh, versus a poor mother living in the deserts of Africa. That's basically what he's trying to say. Now, he says with more than 39 million doses of several vaccines that have now been administered in at least 49 high-income countries, just 25 doses, yep, 25, not million, 25 doses had been given in one lowest income country. And he said, I need to be blunt. The world is on the brink of a catastrophic moral failure and the price of this failure will be paid with lives and livelihood in the world's poorest countries. And while all of this is happening, here's another article on your screen from CNBC. The wealthy are investing like a market bubble is here, or at least near, while people in the poorest countries are essentially dying because they don't have access to a vaccine. What is happening here in the United States of America, in our country, is that a majority of investors with a million dollars or more in their brokerage account believe that the stock market is in a bubble or close to being in a bubble. And they do believe that the bull market will continue because they do believe that the companies that manage to take advantage of this will make more money than before. And which is true, by the way. Some companies are making more money than they made pre-pandemic. Amazon, by the way, is one of them. And Google, Facebook, you know, all of the companies are making money. And they, they believe, a lot of wealthy investors believe that the bull market will continue for now, that it will be raining money. They believe that it will actually be raining money. And they believe that stocks will continue to rise this quarter and the risk tolerance in Q1 of 2021 is actually going up. In other words, they're likely to invest more in the stock market with interest rates at all-time lows. And Janet Yellen basically saying, hey, we need to borrow more money, inject more stimulus. It's quite likely that consumer spending will come back and a lot of stocks will continue to go up. And the millionaire investors are making portfolio changes to reflect the world where the market is most pricey in certain large cap stocks and where certain stocks are under priced, including international stocks. So while one half of the world is living in abject poverty with no access to vaccines, we have the other half of the world and the top 1% figuring out how to make their investments all on a very historic day. I hope you learned something new from this video. Please click like below if you learned something new and please comment below and let me know what you think. You'll get the link to all of our resources in the description section below. Thank you so much for watching everybody. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. I want you to know I really appreciate you. This right here is a little bit of information about me. You'll learn more about who I am, what my journey has been like and why you should listen to me. This channel, the Ignition Time channel is about the country, it's about the economy and it's about your money. I invite you to join our community. We have two membership levels. We have the gold tier and the elite tier. So simply Simply go to the homepage of our channel, click on join and you'll learn more about the benefits of our community. Remember, we release videos at 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. That's 2 p.m. If you want to get on our SMS list, get your cell phone out, send a text message with the word ignition or with the word time to 70,000. That's 70000 and you'll get added to our SMS alerts list going forward. You'll get important information, important news and breaking news alerts about what's going on in the country right now. You can also get on our email list. Simply go to ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts. That's ignitiontime.com forward slash and then you can get added to our email list going forward. You can opt out of the SMS list or the email list at any point in time going forward. You can also follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is ignition underscore time. That's ignition underscore time. So make sure you follow us on Instagram. You can also follow us on Twitter. You'll learn more about what I'm reading. You'll be able to interact with me. I retweet in real time. You'll be able to see all the news that I'm following on Twitter. In fact, here's a quick look at my Twitter feed. You can see that our Twitter community is growing very rapidly and I invite you to join our community on Twitter. Also keep in mind that YouTube does not always send out notifications on time. So all you have to do is simply bookmark youtube.com forward slash ignition time. That's youtube.com forward slash ignition time and then you can visit the home page of our channel and then you can check out our videos at any point in time that you want now remember one of the most valuable aspects of the channel is our community i invite you to join our community i invite you to comment below and engage with other members of our community remember for us 
on this channel. It's not about the red or the blue. It's about the red, white, and blue. I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I'm American. I'll call things out as I see them, and I'll talk about the truth wherever the truth might lead us. As always, you'll get a link to all of our resources in the description section below. So definitely check out our resource section. Please share this video with two friends or family members. That's just two friends or family members. That tells the YouTube algorithm that you did find the video content helpful. And also, please gently ignite the like button. Please smash that like button, but don't do it so hard that you go and and that's too many cracks. Let's clean out the first one and the second one and the third one. I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to have, you know, I want you to have a clear screen so you can watch our videos. I want it to be raining money. I want it to be raining money. I want you to be happy. I want there to be a confetti like atmosphere. I want us to be in dance mode. I want us to be in party mode. I want to be able to bring a smile to your face. That is the goal of Ignition Time. Please click like, please subscribe, please enable notifications. Thank you so much for watching. And also, don't forget to join our community. You can join the gold tier or the elite tier. Simply go to the home page of our channel and click on the join button and you'll learn more about our community. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time.